Good morning, everyone. I'm Dominique Wright from the Department of Agriculture and Food Western Australia, and with me today I have Dusty Severson from the department, who's our entomologist um, and is a specialist on Russian wheat aphid. And today we're going to be discussing uh, Russian wheat aphid and how we're going to recognise or identify it out in the field given the recent outbreak of Russian wheat aphid in South Australia and now in Victoria. So I'm going to hand over to Dusty. Good day, everybody. So there's a few questions we're going to address today. Um, as many of you heard, with the recent introduction of Russian wheat aphid into South Australia and now into um, Victoria, um, we're obviously wondering whether we have it here in WA or not. A couple of reasons why we're treating this very differently um, is firstly, it has to be managed very differently than the two common um, cereal aphids that we have, which are the oat and corn aphids. And so we have a situation where not only firstly does the aphid inject toxins into the plant, which causes um, more stress. That's the first um, uh, thing that's different than the aphids we already have. But secondly, it causes leaf curling. And so when this leaf curling happens as the leaves are trying to unfold and um, so basically it means that insecticides are much less effective and so where this occurs overseas the main method of managing this pest is through um, breeding resistant varieties so we have a couple of, of scenarios so we're hoping we don't have it in WA but in terms of the field um, surveillance there's a few questions that we'll address just here um, what is the aphid? How does it affect crops? Um, what should we be looking for? How should we report? And then a bit on, you know, trying not to um, transfer this pest between paddocks and properties and where we can get more information. So here's one picture of the symptoms caused by the Russian meat aphid. And you can see some nymphs there. Um, firstly, you can see that it's quite a slender aphid and it's a little bit smaller than the oat and corn aphid as well but the the, the symptom on this um, plant this picture came out of um, from Michael Nash in South Australia you can see the symptoms actually look, look a lot like um, wheat street mosaic virus <clears throat> so symptoms are one thing that we can use as an indicator um, but I think where we have early infestations these symptoms will be will be less pronounced but certainly we, 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 can, we can use these when we um, look through fields. So as with the other cereal aphids that we have, um, they only infest um, cereal crops and grasses. Um, so we don't have to worry about the rest. I mentioned about the initial detections and that um, they inject toxins. So here's a bit of a closer look at the aphid. Uh, those of you that do know what the oat and corn aphids look like, which I'll pull up some pictures in a minute, you'll see how quite different it is. Firstly, you'll notice the, the lack of exhaust pipes or cornicles up, up the top of the backside, um, and that's quite pointy at the end of the back. So this is the oat aphid. You can see we've got some, some winged in there, winged aphids, which are much harder to identify, so generally we just go straight for the for the wingless version. And the oat aphid has very distinctive rusty patch at the top of the backside and those those cornicles or, or sorry, cells, which um, are just the sort of exhaust pipes. Um, so those are those are a good giveaway. And of course, in terms of the, the other um, common cereal aphid, the corn aphid, you can see it's quite different, but you can also see those those um, exhaust pipes on the top of the backside. Um, that picture on the right, I mean, you can see that there's a lot of aphids there, but really without a hand lens, you're not going to be able to see um, those features that I've just described. So it's really important to get in um, with a hand lens. Um, a lot of smartphone uh, cameras are really good these days, um, and often you can even zoom in on those. 
um, or if you even have a macro lens attachment to your smartphone, those are really good. Um, I think more and more people are using those these days. So just in terms of relating to the most common ones we have, the, the, in terms of the aphid itself, the most distinctive features are really the lack of those exhaust pipes on the top of the backside and the shape. So yeah, they're, they're a little bit pear-shaped, the ones we already have, whereas the, the Russian meat aphid is much more slender and um, sort of tapered. So that's good. We have that to go with. Um, there's a lot of pests um, that we still don't have in Australia, and if we did, um, some of them are so hard to identify. Um, so at least we have um, some really good characteristics to work with here. And I mentioned about the symptoms. So hopefully, um, certainly in South Australia, they picked up symptoms pretty quickly. Um, so I mentioned about the exhaust pipes, and some can be winged and some can be wingless. Um, in terms of the winged ones, I mentioned they're much harder to identify, so really hone in on the um, the, the wingless uh, version there. And in terms of the leaf curling, this photo here, you can see the leaf has been un, unfurled or un, uncurled. There's quite a lot in there. You see the streaking, but those streaks aren't always yellow. They can go to reddish purple um, as well. So some of these symptoms can be confused with, with virus symptoms as well. So it's important to, um, you know, really get in there and uncurl some of these leaves and have a look. So where and what to look for in terms of actually looking in a paddock. Generally with aphids, they're, they're fairly poor flyers and they're m more often um, moved around on wind, although they can move a little bit when there's not much wind. So we often see these strong edge effects um, in crops, at least when, when crops are initially being um, colonized. So at least we have that to go with where we can focus on crop perimeters and especially where there's been a green bridge, uh, anywhere along roadsides near cereal paddocks and that sort of thing. Uh, just to have a look at, um, I know ryegrass is one of the highlighted hosts, but there's many other grasses. And of course, look at the look at the um, the cereal crop as well. But certainly at the edge and anywhere you see stressed plants, aphids prefer stressed plants. Um, that could be any number of things from nutrient deficiency to to drought stress. So that's a, a good good thing to hone in on. And you can see in this picture, there's quite a lot of leaf curling um, going on here. The, the, the vertical curling. Sometimes it curls the other way as well. And it's really stunting the, the plants there. And here we have that sort of edge effect, patchy damage occurring. These are overseas um, photos. And yeah, you can see some plants, they've obviously been, been killed. This is a, must have been an early infestation. And then um, they're really stressing the, the plants where the aphids occurring. <clears throat> and where, where the head wants to emerge, um, often those those ons get trapped, um, which is sometimes a symptom of something else as well. So it's a good idea to have a have a good look at that. So on to how to report this. Um, it's a bit different than the usual reporting into pest facts, where you know these are all things that we already have. Um, this is something that's uh, you know a little bit more sensitive, just in the in, in the sense that we don't want to be transferring it around. Um, the grain belt, so firstly, in terms of, um, you know, maybe firstly not sending samples if you find suspect um, plants. So we would, we would prefer to firstly um, use the reporting apps that we have. The reason for that is um, we want photos, so we want uh, crops that have been inspected that are suspect, but also ones that, you know, are, are, are clean of aphids. So we can get a snapshot of what's going on out there. Um, and also because the apps, whether you're in mobile range or not, they record your location. So we can automatically get a snapshot um, of what's going on there. And so we, here at the department, we have our, all our crop protection researchers that normally do their surveillance in all their research areas already. They're um, already looking into these apps and they'll be using these for 
all their own um, inspections and that sort of thing. So that's our first um, uh, way of reporting. Also, importantly, is the exotic plant pest hotline, which automatically goes to our pest and disease information service. Um, so anybody can call that number, which is 1-800-084-881. Um, and there's always um, people on the other end of the line to talk to. So I mentioned about avoiding sending samples, but um, sorry, where, where samples do need to be sent, it's important to uh, take measures to stop preventing or sorry, to stop spread of this of this aphid in case it is. So there's you know double bagging and and um, certainly contact us first. Uh, and in terms of preventing spread between paddocks, you can go on to the farmbiosecurity.com.au website for lots of um, different options of, you know, farm biosecurity measures to, to prevent spread and all that. But I think people generally know, um, especially those that know about aphids, they love to, to um, stick to clothing. Not so much boots, but certainly they, they could, but they really do like to stick to clothing and um, transfer that way. So there's a number of options there, especially um, brushing down your clothes at least, um, at the very least anyway. There's a lot of information which has been updated pretty quickly here over the last couple of weeks um, on DAFA's website. There's uh, oodles of information here if you want to go on to um, the website, anything from like what to look for, um, yeah, all the way through to, um, you can see the list there. So um, hopefully I've covered everything there. Um, okay, thank you, Dusty. So 